Did you know Snowflake can make your queries run up to 10x faster just by using its caching mechanisms? But how does it work behind the scenes? In this video, let's understand Snowflake's different levels of caching. But before that, what does caching mean? Caching is like saving a shortcut to something so you can access it faster next time. For example, imagine you always ask your friend for Wi-Fi details. Instead of asking every time, you write it down. Now you can check your note instantly. In computers, caching works the same way. When you visit a website, your browser saves parts of the details like images, so it loads faster next time. Apps store frequently used data in memory to avoid slow database requests. So caching reduces wait time and speeds things up. Now you are clear on what is caching. As we discuss this concept in Snowflake, it's important to recall its architecture since caching occurs at different layers within it. Overall, Snowflake architecture consists of three layers. Service layer, compute layer, and storage layer. At the service layer, Snowflake maintains a result cache. What is result cache? If the exact same query is run again, Snowflake reuses the previous result instead of recomputing it. It works even if the virtual warehouse is suspended because the cache is stored in Snowflake services layer, not tied to compute. Say for instance, a user runs select sum of sales from orders where year equal to 2023. If another user runs the exact same query, Snowflake instantly returns the cached result without querying the database again. But if the table gets updated, the cache is invalidated. Its key benefit, zero cost. Snowflake does not charge for retrieving cached results. It works across all users in the same account if they run the same query. In addition to this, Snowflake also maintains metadata cache at the service layer. What is it? Snowflake stores metadata like table structure, row count, file locations, etc. to avoid unnecessary scans. This helps optimize query planning and execution. Say for example, running select count star from customers. Snowflake doesn't scan the full table. It fetches the row count from metadata, making it nearly instantaneous. So the key benefit, no compute cost again, because this happens at the metadata level that is at the service layer and Snowflake only scans the required partitions. Moving to the next layer, that is at the compute layer, Snowflake has a local disk cache on virtual warehouses. The local disk cache, also called as query cache. What is it? When you run a query, Snowflake caches intermediate results on the compute layer, that is on a virtual warehouse. What does this mean? This means if another similar query needs part of the same data again, it does not have to recompute everything. Say for example, if you run select star from orders where region is equal to west, Snowflake caches part of the orders table, that is west region orders. If you run a subsequent query like select star from orders, this reuses some of the cache data from the previous query. So the key benefit? reducing I.O. costs and improving speed. Because for the same data requests, it reads from the cache instead of querying storage. Last but not least, in the storage layer, Snowflake uses a remote disk cache. Also, it is called data caching. What is it? When Snowflake loads data from cloud storage like S3, Azure or GCS, it caches data in micro partitions and keeps frequently accessed micropartitions in storage close to compute nodes. This helps speed up access for subsequent queries using the same data. For example, if you query a table for the first time, Snowflake retrieves data from cloud storage. The second time, it reads directly from the cached micropartitions, making it much faster. So the key benefit? It reduces the need to fetch data from cloud storage repeatedly. 
which improves performance, especially for large data sets. Here is the summary of Snowflake cache types. That's a wrap on Snowflake caching. So by leveraging these caching layers, Snowflake ensures faster queries, lower compute costs, and an overall performance boost, allowing you to analyze data efficiently without unnecessary delays. If this helped you, hit like and subscribe for more Snowflake tutorials. Comment below if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next video.